Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> to another episode of the Vegas Squares podcast. Middle of the week, it is our golf betting edition. And we are back here with the Waste Management Open Preview Show. And uh, we got a lot to talk about this show. And not a lot of it uh, has to do with Waste Management, uh, the Waste Management Open. I know that (laughs) it's uh, it's a hot button issue this week with your boy Patrick Reed and, you know, between embedded balls and burner accounts. It's a a hell of a... (laughs) gossip gossip filled show i don't want to turn into tmz or wendy wilson or whatever her name is but you know we're going to talk about it a little yeah bit. you do you kind of do let's admit it you do a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know if he wasn't such a scumbag you know i so sorry i don't want to open the show with a bomb there but um actually what i do want to open the show with is because we didn't have a show this weekend uh token the lions uh are finally rid of matthew stafford sir. Yeah, I, I actually love the trade, even if it doesn't pan out. I like them moving away from him and getting a young, younger quarterback currently. And seeing, I know Goff is happy about having a new start, new life, and seeing what happens. So, you know, I can't imagine that Jared Goff going from LA to Detroit is loving life at the moment. So, no offense to the city of Detroit, but. Token, I hate to shit on your bubble here, but I mean, Detroit for Lions, sure is up down right now. Yeah, but. Detroit Lions and first round picks don't normally go well together. Oh, I know. I absolutely know that for sure. <laughs> it's more or less the first overall pick they go down in flames with, so. Well, maybe so. I would say you could argue that their first overall pick was Matt Stafford, and that was maybe their best pick. You got. What, 10, 12 good years out of him? Well, Megatron. Was he the first overall pick, though? No, but he was the first. I mean, he was. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I meant first overall. Yeah, but I mean, Ah, who were the other guys? It was like Roy Williams. Rodgers was probably one of the worst. Charles Rodgers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You're dogging on my Auburn guys, man. Come on. Yeah, well, uh, hey. They're back from Auburn. Yeah, it it was more off the field with Rodgers than his. Yeah on the field when he was healthy that's fair that's fair but you know what like I said you know I was I have to say I was shocked that they got a starting quarterback and two first round picks for Matthew Stafford when it was publicly announced that they were going to part ways with Matthew Stafford Tony this just tells me the asking price for Deshaun Watson might be ownership in the franchise and some AMC and GameStop stock at this point yeah, it's it's not going to happen. I don't think for Watson. It's he, you know. The the interesting thing is, you know, and what I don't really like about this is Watson just he just comes across as so not believable. And, and you know how he wants how he's requested a trade and you know wants a new situation. He doesn't like the ownership deal. Yet he said, I think like what was it, almost ten, eleven months ago, when he signed a very lucrative, long extension how much he loved the city, how much he loved the franchise, and it was completely the opposite. And, I mean, how much has changed? Like, you know, honestly, how much has changed? Yeah, obviously, you know, they've moved on from the head coach. Um, but, you know, the team is essentially the same. You know, they, they certainly went for it, clearly, over the last couple of seasons with all of the trades and losing all the draft picks and things like that. But, I mean, uh, everything is sort of the same. So, you know, which which way is it? You know, he had the best year of his career. I don't think there's any question about that this last season, uh, you know, which is not necessarily easy to do on a bad team. Um, you know, I, I was quite impressed uh, with this season. I've been impressed with his, uh, you know, how he's come along and over the last few years. So, you know, if you love the franchise and you love the city and you loved everything so much before, if that was truthful, then I just don't see, you know, what, the, the real difference is here. Uh, I, I think especially getting in a new head coach, uh, obviously, a, you know, new GM in a situation, you know, I don't see how it could be necessarily bad. You know, how can they go backwards from here? So 
uh, that's the whole thing that I, I just don't really like about all of this is you know everyone not really being truthful and you know being straight up about it and it's all this these game this game playing but i think you're dead right Aaron. uh overall that there's just no way that, that there's that there could be a market for deshaun watson especially when there's a there are still going to be a lot of other quarterbacks that are certainly capable i think um that are that are going to be in the market um you know not nearly as good as watson no question about that but uh yeah i think i think it's just going to be too high and too steep uh his asking price yeah, I got to think the change of heart, maybe one, getting DeAndre Hopkins, you know, he's out of Houston. That was probably kind of a head scratcher. Yeah, but that's true. I also kind of feel like maybe there's some outside influences telling him how to feel. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And that's, 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 cool. that's quite unfortunate. So, yeah. uh, all right, well, let's get back and shift gears here, talk about golf. And I know that um, we might have some interesting top, uh, some talk here because I think there's a couple people on the panel that are on different sides of the spectrum. And obviously what we're talking about is Patrick Reed. If you're not familiar with it by now, it's already Wednesday. We're talking four days from now. I know our, our podcast is, uh, you know, we can only speak when we're <laughs> available to speak here. But, uh, you know, the embedded situation and, and you know, I mean, like I said, if you live under a rock, basically on the, on the 10th hole, Patrick Reed hits a ball. On the TV cameras, it clearly bounces. The situation that happened at ground level is that no one – could confirm the bounce. Patrick Reed decides to, uh, I, I guess, pick up the ball. I, I didn't realize that you could even pick up the ball before rules official. And then I started to learn about, you know, how, you know, the gentleman's kind of policing your own, you know, policing your own in that spot. But uh, the volunteer apparently was out to lunch, and not paying attention to the ball. <laughs> and when the rules official comes over, he's basically, you know, like, it's kind of like when, you know, the teacher walks over, you know, you're trying to confirm that you didn't do something wrong, but all the rules official can see, well, I have to take you at your word that you didn't, you know, you're not laying in an embedded lie, but your ball, the ball's in your hand. So, I mean, at this point, what are we doing here at this point? Why am I even called over? And then you have Patrick Reed's wife, Justine, getting on what she thought was her burner account turned out to be Patrick Reed's actual accounts to then throw Rory McIlroy under the bus and say he did the same thing on hole 18. And it's, it's just, it's just another notch in the long line of Patrick Reed. I'm going to make up a word scumbaggery. But the first thing that I got from you guys in the text in the group text was uh, from John here. And he said, I love the guy. So I'm going to let you, the defense, make your opening statement here. <laughs> All right. So, you know, me coming, first of all, from a, from a golf, uh, you know, where I started playing in college, I didn't play in high school. And first and foremost, integrity is everything and karma's a bitch. So what's happening with Reed right now is what I think people have been doing in high schools and college matches for a very long time. Okay. So these guys, they're cutthroat. Uh, particularly with a few of my friends that played pretty level, pretty high level high school golf, is that people they take advantage of it and then they'll laugh about it afterwards. Okay, so he's that guy. So I don't really like him as a person. Okay, so here's the long, however, however, the fact is, is that he brings an excitement to golf, uh, particularly what I mentioned in the group text through the through the Ryder Cup matches. He, he's the villain okay and, okay and golf needs a villain golf needs a villain it, it the, the last villain was almost tiger woods i was just gonna say that good. actually i was just gonna say tiger was such a polarizing like lebron and these guys tom brady you know i was gonna say tiger woods and you you, you said it i nailed it on the head and, and here's a big part about the whole situation if karma is existent which i know it is and and tony you've played some pretty you know high level golf as well and and he bogeyed four out of the last four out of the next five holes. So maybe he'll learn something from this. Okay. So he, he if he, it sounds like he knew it was wrong. Okay. Which I think it, I think it was wrong. However, I think it's good for the PGA tour because unfortunately in, in, you know, with, uh, uh in social media these days, we need something to talk about. And people, you know, look at celebrities now. They'll throw out sex tapes just to get attention. And, you know, <laughs> what a the comparison. attention of Patrick Reed. And, <laughs> I, it, it's huge. It's huge. And, and what Patrick Reed is doing, it, it's just bad. Any publicity is good publicity. And especially for the PGA Tour. I love the PGA Tour. They've done a great job. And, 
you know, they do all sorts of great charity work and they need this just one villain. Just let's just not get too many. And, and that's my big thing with it. I'm not a fan of the guy, but I like watching him play. Does that do make we, sense? And do we take it on from there? Yeah. So it was true that Rory McIlroy, you know, the, the similar situation basically happened with Rory and we're, at this point, because it's Roy McIlroy, we're like, you know, we'll move that to the side and we'll attack the villain here, attack the guy who, you know, seems to always have a track record of doing this. And like you said, not really apologizing for it or anything. Or I wonder, John, if if he had just taken the liberty and done it and then hit and gone forward without actually calling a rules official. So basically what I'm saying is, is that everybody saw it on TV, but no one – who's watching on TV is obviously there to, you know, you see Patrick Reed taking his next shot from a, you know, an improved lie, quote unquote. It almost seems like it doesn't become a controversy at that point. No, I think the rules official having and to come does, in. The- you're exactly right. And, and look at, look at Reed. It's so funny. He's a natural, and I'm not going to say cheater because a lot of these guys do the same thing. And I hate the word cheating because they're finessing it. as They like to say, and, Patrick Reed's been doing this since he was probably 13 years old and it came naturally to him and, and and he just didn't, you know, it it didn't look good, but in the long run for the PGA tour, I think it's a good thing. All right. Well, Tony, you're shaking your head. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I think a lot of things that John said are are, are good and and certainly on point. The the thing I have an issue with is one of the last things you said is a lot of these guys are doing it. And I, and I I just couldn't disagree more. I could absolutely not disagree more with that. Uh, I I really think, and especially we bring up Rory McIlroy, who is, I think of the general peak of what we're talking about here, a guy that's always been straight up a guy that has, you know, taken bad drops and accepted the reality of uh, of a situation he's always erred on the side of caution in the in these spots um i remember he uh he he dropped in a spot that landed in someone's footprint and hit it anyway just because he really wasn't sure um of of what it was and he didn't want to actually have it look bad you know like he'd you know be in a you know he'd actually be able to redrop and and have you know a good lie you know things like that happened last year um that's my uh, experience with this um, again I didn't play anything you know past high school but I did play with two guys that ended up playing on tour one guy on the PGA tour one on some of the mini tours and just my experience was exactly the opposite you know people always erring on the side of you know not doing too much to make it even look like uh, you know you could be bending the rules at all and um, again I don't know a lot of the tour players I spent more time actually working with LPGA players with some of the uh, teaching stuff and um, you know things we did with uh, boys and girls clubs and um, it's just that's not at all the take that I get um, you know from these high level players um, you know again that's that's only my experience um, I think Xander Shoffley said it probably pretty right uh, a few days ago that pretty much everybody on tour does not like this guy is pretty much against him and um, you know, and and how much the tour has an influence on how all of this comes out. Uh, You know, again, and one of the other things I'm not, I'm not in agreement with is, is I I don't think all publicity is good publicity at all. I think that's one of the great things about this tour and what they've really tried to hone in on and how much they keep away from us. I think, Uh, you know, they really try to keep, uh, keep a bottle on on a lot of the, some of the bad things that have happened. You know, certainly the uh, the whole Dustin Johnson, you know, cocaine deal, and you know, ended up what ended up going down there. You know, that never really all came out, and I think that's pretty much on the tour uh, for it. They try to keep a very very clean, uh, you know, good looking record. This is not something that they want, um, you know, long term. I think this is not something that anybody wants uh, on this tour. I'm not saying that not having a villain esque type of a person is 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 fine. That's fine you can have a fiery personality. You can be kind of a dick. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's good. You know, certainly I, I'm with you there. And there's been those type of guys throughout time uh, on golf, but. Well, and you can argue Bryson DeChambeau is really sure. taking that, that, that torch right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a great example too, because that's a guy that's really not very likable. Somebody that I, I, I won't back, but I certainly wouldn't put him in the read camp in the sense that I don't think he's cheating or bending the rules. Not in the least. Um, he's kind of, you know, the way he goes about things, you know, he's, he's, he's just a prick about everything, but I don't think he has that ulterior motive. Whereas Reed has, as you said, since he was 13, uh, John, there's no doubt about it. They talk, no, I mean, they've talked <laughs> right. to people all the way back from his Pittsburgh days. I got two yeah. This guy, th- this right. guy does this on a consistent basis. So. 
Yeah. I got two rebuttals here, if you guys don't mind me stepping in. First of all, maybe I've been hanging out with too many golf hustlers, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, second of might all, might be true. <laughs> um, second of all, um, well, you know, we mentioned all the other times he's cheated. Do, do you know any other times that, like, it has – and when I say finessing stuff and I, what, what they talked about, I can't remember who it was. I think it was a PGA Tour player, how he sort of finessed the ball or whatever – when they and then you know you you interview a couple uh, and I'm talking about on the green when you mark your ball with the quarter right you know you mark it way back and you, and, and, and in these it, yeah. five footers and it's downhill left to right that little that little inch you know yeah. could each certainly there's some guys that have done that I'm not saying it doesn't happen yeah. but I just think it's a very very yeah. very small minority well, what, and they get called out on the, like that doesn't it's shit is not allowed like that's the thing they did. Well, I watched uh, um, I watched a what, podcast. What's with, what's the last? As I say, I watched a podcast. Uh, was it the for Patrick scandal? Reed? He improved his line a bunker. Bunker uh, scandal a yeah. year and a half ago. He has. There's been many, many mm-hmm. times, three or four times on camera that he has placed his club behind the ball, three or four times, uh, pr- pretty hard to try to lift the ball up in the rough so it could be. I mean, you look at it on camera, you can barely see the ball. Uh, yeah, and I a see. few other times, the ball is, like, elevated. And, I mean, it's happened. But has sure. it moved? You know, we don't really know. But, you, I mean, you just – that stuff is just not allowed. Like, you can't improve your lie, you know, like that. So, I think that's so funny. And, you, and you're completely right. Just gambling on golf for so long, you know, is that these guys are calling them out. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I, I do think – I mean, I, I don't like the word cheating. You know? But that's what I, he's I doing. Really that's what's happened. I, I mean, what other word do you use? He got yeah. booted off the Georgia golf team because he was an incessant Listen. cheater. I mean, it's, it, it's basically happened. Ask – anyway, Kevin Kisner has talked about this, that I believe his exact quote – this is classic Kisner, by the way – is they wouldn't piss on him if he was on fire, his past teammates. Classic Kisner, but <laughs> – that's – I mean, he said this at Golf Digest. <laughs> like, all the past guys at Georgia, he's th- – well, he's persona hey, like, grata. Like I said, I, I, was, love it. I was watching I love a podcast, it. and Joel Damon was on the podcast, and he even said it too. I mean, it, it's kind of a Kisner quote. He said – he said, Patrick Reed would throw the ball in the hole if you let him. Yeah. I mean <laughs> – I mean, everybody – this is this is top to bottom, you know. I, you know, the same thing was Vijay so Singh you're missing years ago. Point. Same thing. I want to get Token here in this spot, yes, and, let's hear and I want to. I want to hear yeah, kind I, of. Yeah, I know this is too much, right? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I just want to get everybody involved, and I want to hear Tokens. Like, how do you approach this as a more casual golf fan? Like, Patrick Reed has one of the greatest Ryder Cup right matches in, middle, in history. Middle, right in the middle. <laughs> but he's like, he's Captain America. He's like embraced this Captain, America. but no one likes him. But everybody likes Captain America, but not this Captain America. <laughs> I'm. I'm not gonna chime in too much about the video but uh how he handled the situation and the volunteer that marked or spotted the ball could have also worded it differently in my opinion is uh they did not happen to see it bounce or couldn't see it bounce and they said i mean she could have been looking at 10 million other things yeah i mean that's not her absolute number one job you know i mean but the thing is is Okay, token, but I mean, uh, here we go. We've got television cameras everywhere. It, yes. it, you know, is replay a thing for golf? I mean, or is that just way too long? Uh, it would take five seconds to see. I mean, we all saw it. We saw it bounce. Oh, yeah. And it's almost, I would say, 0.001% possible that it got embedded. But other than that, I would say it's probably not embedded. It, it definitely was not embedded. And based on the first video footage that I saw, he pressed down slightly on it, causing a little lip. The second video I saw cut that footage out. So with the publicity of the PGA Tour, Justine Reed got in the film. They're room. they're they're trying wow, to amazing. cover it up a little as well. I mean, in my opinion, when in doubt, it should be played as lied. If you clearly could not see it bounce, and for sure it's embedded, of course you get relief. It, uh, John is. Is Patrick Reed lucky that fans aren't allowed at tournaments right now? Because, I mean, could you imagine if, yeah. he, if he plays the waste mm-hmm. management and these fucking oh. rowdy <laughs> right. Guys, here's the thing. If it was Sergio, oh, if it was Sergio they would have made fun of him till the day he died. Since it's Patrick Reed, 
all social media has to say is, okay, it's Captain America. Everybody's going to be like, yeah, you know, go Patrick Reed. I don't really think the fans would go too crazy. However, it is up to the other to- players on tour, like we were talking about with Xander and uh, I think it was Finau um, that were talking about it afterwards. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, I think uh, just that little bit of, you know, spark. And then he goes on to win by five, boys. I'm telling you, it, it, he, he, you know, I'll, he, I'll give it to you guys. He cheated. I will give it to you guys. But he bogeyed the four out of the last the next five holes. He should. He would have won by eight if he didn't cheat. Well, here's this. Okay. <laughs> you know? I'll liken this to something in my world. The Patriots are accused of deflating footballs in the AFC Championship game however many years ago in the second quarter. They went on to win by four touchdowns. But everyone says they still cheated. I'm a Colts fan. I remember that game, and I, I, thought, it was bullshit. I thought it was bullshit the whole time, th- this whole deflate gate thing. So what? Well, I'm not saying everybody, okay. but you know there's people yeah. out there that will never give the credit where credit's due. I mean, they still won by four no, touchdowns. I, but. No, I, that's what I'm saying. As a Colts fan, and you guys kicked our ass for how many years, right? And I didn't think it was – I really didn't think it was a big deal. Okay, slap them on the wrist, tell them not to deflate the footballs anymore, and let's go. I mean, we got our ass kicked that game. And that's what—that's kind of where I, I see with this. Yeah, he won by five, but you know, if this shot goes squirrely sideways, you know, if it, if it's a not embedded lie, or you know, you lose, you know, hey, Tiger got a ten on number twelve at Augusta. Anything's possible. So <laughs> at that point, so all right. Well, that's uh, anybody have any closing statements on on, on Patrick Reed here? Uh, we can wrap up and turn the page. Um, getting head shake so we'll i mean his his mental fortitude is pretty nuts uh, that's all i can say the fact that he still won that tournament the fact that he's won a major uh it's hard to do him and vj singh are in a class that that, I, that i've ever seen uh on their own to be inked that badly disliked and people not wanting them around um the great majority of the tour i think we're pretty convinced of that and then they can still win tournaments and still be great players is that's really, really, really hard to do. Uh, and, so. and VJ's thing is from like 30 years ago, isn't it? Oh, yeah. He che- cheated to stay on tour. Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you're right. They, they, they don't forget. They just literally pass, the, don't. pass this on to the next generation. And it's say, it's incredible. We hate it's this incredible. guy. Yeah. And, and VJ did a lot of things that were very squirrely throughout his PGA Tour career as well. Um, yeah, he was never a guy that was ever accepted. Uh, by the players on the tour, and he—I mean, just still dominant. He had a you know great dominant run. That's just so damn hard to do. So, if you want to give Patrick Reed any credit, his mental fortitude—I'd love to have a conversation with a guy just to hear, you know, what he goes through and what he talks to himself and what he does in the course. This is fantastic stuff. In that sense, you know, whatever you do, don't buy him tickets two tickets to a sporting event either. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll right. Just, he'll just complain about it all. He's so. Such an asshole. He really is. <laughs> and, People you know throw bottles and cans at him. <laughs> But to wrap it up here, it's just like he doesn't even like take a, 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 a like a, even a even if it's not if he's, if he's like because he's taking the full blown ain't my fault I didn't do it approach even if he's like hey something weird may have happened we we did we you know we we tried to come together to make the best decision That's all I gotta say something yeah. may have gone wrong I'm sorry you know all, even if That's you don't it. mean it even if you don't mean it <laughs> That's all you gotta do yeah. Um, Maybe. Yes, I said, if there were fans here, just based on the spirit of the moment and prisoner of the moment, John, I think they'd let Patrick Reed have it for 100% sure. Yeah, Yeah. and as I said, everything in golf is integrity. We all know this. We all play golf. And, you know, I was bringing it back to gambling. Like, if if you cheat a little bit, oh, you're going to get your ass kicked. Oh, yeah, and you will never live it down. And if there were fans there, they will let them know that it did bounce. I'll tell you what. Oh, it, yeah. It's just that's one of those true. things where, where yeah, yeah. And, and uh, there should, yeah, the fans should have gotten in there. I completely agree with Token here. That was, that's a, that's something that should happen before we make this heyday. But, however, we're going to get, we're going to get more viewers next week on the PGA Tour. And I don't think that's a bad thing. That's fair. That's a, that's a fair argument. I mean, like you said, any, any chance to get eyeballs, even if it's, just for hating a guy. I can understand both yours and Tony's side of that, you know, as the purist, you know, cheating is cheating and it's not good for the game, you know, but uh, at the same time, if people are watching Mm -hmm. just to hate, then 
that's another viewer. That's another set of eyeballs. So fair enough. I, I can respect that. Saudis are happy too. He's out in Saudi Arabia this week and they've already sold out their allotment of tickets. So that's, that's pretty yeah. nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and they can say things in languages he doesn't understand. <laughs> So, all right, how'd the farmers go? Got, uh, how'd the farmers insurance go for you guys? I I had one bet, Zalatoris over Siwu, and with a missed cut, Siwu cashed. Or, uh, excuse me, Zalatoris cashed in for me. So, how did it go for you guys? Well, I went uh, over. Uh, didn't I only had I think three matchups, uh, and they didn't. They all went uh, over three, and then. Um, yeah, the uh, I missed a bunch of cuts. I think uh, one of the other um, futures did not come in. So yeah, an over I think seven or eight week in the PG Tour uh, came close to hitting uh, Robert McIntyre in the uh, European Tour. That would have been nice, but uh, still had a couple matchup wins over there. So slight win in the European Tour, but uh, of what we talk about here, uh, not a good week for me. Yikes. Yeah, same with me. I went over four in my matchups and about the closest person was the co-leader after round one was uh norn and went down the toilet after that so speaking of that tony finau is another t2 just i know he didn't have the 54 hole lead <laughs> amazing, but right? it's just yeah, yeah. So he's, he's he's the jack nicholas of our time but actually dfs went all right it, it was a well above average who's better at finishing five or second uh xander shoffley or tony finau it's a tough race they both can they can they can both do it. That's why it's T two. <laughs> I mean Xander won the tour championship. He's won some some pretty big tournaments. So yeah. That's that's true. Well he big said that's why he said and, uh, well, he didn't say win, he said finishing T two. <laughs> yeah, no, true. I, I, I it's a good point. It's a good point. Excellent. Yeah. He's awesome. And we'll talk about this later. But uh, last week for me it went went pretty well. I had a shot at, at Finau uh for uh, for eighteen did? to one. But uh both of our uh, both of our even bet matchups came in, and uh, Harris English, my boy, I'm I'm gonna still ride him. Uh, he did he missed the cut with a, a tough uh, tough Thursday tea time, right, Tony? Uh, just like you he talked did, about. Yeah, it. yeah, he did. Yeah, he had a tough South Course uh, Thursday tea time, and uh, he just Harris English just fell off, and that happens from time to time. But overall, really good week. All right, let's move into the waste management. Defending champion is Webb Simpson. We've got uh, one of the best tournaments on tour. Unfortunately, it happens right usually during the Super Bowl. So one year I'd like to go. I'd like to go down there. I've never been down. Have you guys been down to this waste management? I have not. Oh. I'm surprised. I went down to Tucson, Arizona for the match play a few years back, and we got snowed on. <laughs> and it was <laughs> it's beautiful Tucson, Arizona, right? Sunny Tucson, Arizona. Uh, we were going to watch the top 64 players in the world, and we got snowed on in Tucson. But uh, <laughs> so now I'll never go there again, and we're going to go to the WMO next time, I guarantee. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that the price of, of tickets in that, uh, what is that, number 16, those boxes, I mean, it's just become more and more of a spectacle of who can just become the most rambunctious patron at the, at this thing at this point. So, but I mean, it's all in good fun as long as nobody's getting hurt and the golf's not affected. But uh, again, like I said, Webb Simpson defending champion here. Uh, John Rahm is our favorite currently going off at William, at William Hill at seven to one uh, initial thoughts about this tournament here, guys. Like I said, I know it's right. Usually during the uh, Super Bowl, So it has a hard time getting eyeballs, especially on Sunday, but maybe Patrick, the Patrick Reed saga, even though he's not playing, might change that. Maybe people who aren't even paying attention will watch it thinking Patrick Reed's even in it at that point and maybe stick around and stay tuned when he's, they realize he's not. So uh, initial thoughts on this one, Tony, what do you, what do you I mean? I, I know that this is about when you said you get going here. So uh, I know that you're really kind of dialed in for this one. Absolutely. Yeah. No, this is one of my favorite events. Uh, I do enjoy uh, watching this one for sure. Like for all the reasons that you mentioned and uh yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, the great rambunctious crowds and it's not just the 16, but um, you know, they, there's just tens of thousands of patrons throughout the week. It's one of the most, uh, you know, well attended events, you know, on tour year after year. So it's a fantastic thing. Uh, you know, wonderful event. Um, 
We're you still going to get gonna, 5K a day. I yeah, think 5K a day, you know, so that's nice. But, um, yeah, and the fields have gotten better and better as the years have gone on, too, kind of as, as this tournament has made a name for itself. You've seen – because this used to be kind of a moderate, you know, type of field. It was just another event kind of thing, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And now, you know, we're seeing usually four or five at least out of the top ten in the world here. Um, you know, no change in that this this year as well. You know, we, we see Rom, you know, JT, McElroy, uh, Shoffley, uh, Matsuyama, guys like that. You know, it's a fantastic field field um still a lot of local players guys that have grown up here and or now are living um in this area so you get kind of that local vibe as well um yeah it's a great tournament it's a fun course they had a redesign uh which we might get into a little later you know four or five years ago which i think made it a lot more difficult which uh is fun um you know a little can be a little bit weather dependent here but uh, i really like the course it's fun uh good spot and uh yeah great tournament all around i couldn't agree more with you and, to, and Token, I mean, this is not usually a spot where we see Rory McIlroy, but he's kind of uh, ramped up in the sense of, I mean, he's staying here. Usually he's with Patrick Reed over there in uh, Saudi Arabia and stuff. But, uh, I mean, is this kind of an exciting thing? I know that Rory's basically said, you know, the COVID has altered his schedule because going back and forth in and out of these countries is just not something he can do right now. So getting a, a top flight player like that along with, you know, guys like Justin Thomas, the aforementioned Shoffley, and we get a, a field of guys that uh, is exciting to even the casual golfer. Absolutely. Some long hitters that usually are more in the Saudi area around this time, and uh, de definitely a, a fun course to watch these guys that can shoot really low, especially, I mean, some even longer Canadian hitters in this matchup uh, – category as well uh it's going to be an interesting one to watch i mean kind of good that they did change the course five or six years ago but it would have been cool to see how they would have handled the shorter easier course and potentially may maybe another whole one on a par four i mean 20 years ago only pga tour ace has happened at this tournament on 17 that was andrew mcgee True. Very nice. And John, we got uh, the defending champ. Like I talked about Webb Simpson going off at 16 to one. We know Tony Johnson's philosophy on, on the, the defending champ in the prior year. Usually he's preoccupied with other things, but uh, Webb Simpson seems kind of like a different breed. He's one, he's a, a vet on tour. What kind of chance do you give him even despite all the distractions? Uh, Webb's a fade here. Uh, you know, we, he went on that run last year and, uh, basically, yeah, it, it's, it's just the truth, and I completely agree with Tony that uh, that first of all, we, we all know about the uh, post win comeback. We all know about that. If you win the week before, it's very hard, unless you're Justin Thomas or Rory or Tiger, or, you know, Phil, someone like that. No, these guys can't reel off to it, but especially for Webb, where He's not playing as good as last year, first of all, where he went on a massive run. Looks so good. And uh, now he's going to have to come back, and he's going to be distracted. And, uh, you know, in all, in all honesty, I think matchups against Webb should be a uh, should be good bet. Matchups against Webb. There you go. You got it. I, I actually am looking forward, Token, here uh, to this. Before we get into the course outline, we've got uh, – a hell of a featured group here in Webb Simpson, Gary Woodland, and Matsuyama uh, coming up on Friday. I, I mean, you've got just Scottsdale domination here. Like I said, Simpson, defending champion, uh, has four top tens at Scottsdale. Uh, Gary Woodland won in 2018, and then Matsuyama went back to back in 16 and 17. That I feel is a, is a great featured group. Um, there's other groups here. You got Siwoo, Brooks, and Ricky. You got Berger, Rory, and Shoffley. And then you also have English Rom and Thomas. What's your favorite out of these uh, these featured groups here in the first couple of days? It's definitely the Burger uh, McRoy and uh, Shoffley one for me. I mean, three of the better golfers in the world, and one that hardly ever is around in the United States around this time of year because he's usually played in the European, and that's Rory. I mean, it, it's a rarity to see in a hidden gem, especially on the TPC Scottsdale course to see him play on it so you got to figure one of those guys is probably going to finish second in the tournament 
A definite decent chance. <laughs> I, I would say that's a favorite on the betting side. <laughs> uh, it'd be cool if you could yeah. bet that somewhere like offshore or whatever. But uh, so, all right. Well, TPC Scottsdale, uh, I have not had a chance to play it myself either, but it's definitely on the list. Every time I get down there, I say I'm going to play it and, you know, just never go down there for the purposes of playing golf. I'd love to go down and just do a Scottsdale run of all these, you know, the Troon. Oh. You know, Troon, freaking Greyhawk, Scottsdale, all these would be great oh my to just uh, to, to be a part of. But um, nevertheless, Tony Johnson's going to give us an outline of TPC Scottsdale, as he does every week. So, Tony, without further ado, take it away. may not be as detailed as uh, in previous weeks. This is the first course we're now seeing on tour that I haven't either been at or played, uh, I think, besides – uh, one of them, maybe since uh, since we've started up the year again. But um, you've been to the Hawaii courses, huh? I have, yeah, both of those. Oh wow! So um, yeah, so this is a. Uh, but again, uh, we've talked about it a little bit. Um, you know, great spot here. Uh, stadium course is uh, seven thousand two hundred and sixty six yards, but only a par seventy one. So there are only three par fives, which you would normally think might favor some of the you know shorter hitters. Again, um, you know, with only three par fives versus four, uh, you know, you're not going to get as you know that super low scoring with guys that can get there in two. But that's actually really not been the case. Uh, it has been more of a a longer hitter uh, spot here. Uh, all three of those par fives are over five hundred fifty yards, so that might have something to do with it. Um, and really only one of those is, is reachable in two by the majority of the field. The other two, you really have to get it out there and hit a very strong second shot, sometimes actually over a hazard uh, just to get it there. So I think that's probably what plays into this a little bit more. But, um, you know, Aaron, you brought it up, and I think it's important to note that this is the first tournament that there will be actually some spectators here uh, on the PGA Tour, uh, 5,000 a day, as you said. Um, so it's going to be very different, I think, for, uh, for a tour event. And I know guys like Rory McIlroy, who has, has said many times he's missed the spectators and he was not able to adjust for a long time you know without them there I think that will be a welcome sight you know for, for a lot of them again 5,000 is not that many you know spread around uh, 18 holes but some of the main groups you know will certainly have probably 10 to 20 percent of those spectators you know watching them um, you know at any given time and I think that that will be meaningful uh, so we'll see how that uh, uh, how that influences some of these guys I think I think guys like McElroy will definitely um, um, shoot up I think because of this uh, grass wise and everything about the course some um, everything's Bermuda out there uh, the greens are overseeded uh, with POA uh, and actually a few other grasses I think some bent uh, is in there as well so pretty standard greens uh, throughout but you know we don't see a ton of Bermuda across both rough and uh, and fairway uh, that's usually more in, in actually in the southeast uh, comparably speaking uh, than out here but um, a lot of guys are very familiar with this type of grass so I, I don't see any significant advantage you know one way or the other uh, one of the things that is uh, comparable to last week is the uh, very narrow fairways here uh, just like uh, Torrey Pine South um, only about 28 yards wide on average you're going to see a lot of guys missing fairways not necessarily meaning you can't get to the greens but uh, still only 28 yards wide, you know, puts it in the bottom 15%, uh, of course, is played regularly on tour of uh, a fairway width. Uh, greens and hole locations uh, get set on purpose, uh, basically, so it's difficult to get the ball close to the hole. This course tends to play uh, very, very uh, low on the proximity scale uh, throughout, so uh, guys are really not able to get it all that close. Uh, the nice thing about that, though, is these are relatively flat greens. They're not all that challenging. They haven't, they didn't change that much from the redesign uh, in 2014, so putts can be made, and that's why we've seen a lot of low scores, you know, throughout, just, just because guys aren't getting it within that 10 to 15 foot range all that often doesn't mean you can't hold those 20 to 25 footers so uh strong putting uh good lag putting we're gonna see a lot of 50 60 uh, uh foot putts here uh that tends to win the day here or win the week i should say um you know, of course, plays pretty fast. As we know, it is in the desert, doesn't get a lot of rain. Uh, also at higher elevation, about 1,200 uh, square feet. Um, we haven't seen that now for, what, three or four straight weeks on that California swing. So uh, we'll see the ball go out there a little bit further, obviously, with the warmer temps uh, in general uh, in this area of the country. Uh, certainly, we're going to see some long, long, long drives. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to me, it's a complete bag, uh, uh, top to bottom. Uh, we have throughout uh, time, as you've mentioned, some of these past winners Aaron mostly long hitters mostly really good long iron players uh, guys that are really really good with woods uh, there's a lot of holes where you might only have to take three or five wood off the tee uh, so that's kind of where I'm looking at throughout but um, 
This week, weather-wise, going to be a little bit cooler uh, than normal, so mostly in the 60s and 70s, uh, just light winds, though. And uh, I do think we're going to see some pretty good scores. Uh, my guess, uh, the winner around that 17 under to 19 under range, um, nothing all that different, you know, from years past. We have seen it go under 20 before, but that was only when the conditions got soft, when there had been a lot of rain, uh, either beforehand or during the tournament. Uh, Ricky Fowler, uh, the year he won a couple of years ago, they actually got some rain, two or three out of the, uh, the days there. So uh, certainly was very scorable. But I think we're going to see a pretty traditional tournament uh, here. And um, I'm expecting some pretty low scores, especially the top end players. You see all these top end guys like Rom, even McElroy seeing the, the course for, for the first first time I feel like this plays into a lot of their strengths uh you know we, we talked about Bubba Watson how it fits his eye really really well uh I think the top end players it really really fits them so my guess is we could see maybe one guy go at 20 under and then you know second and third place maybe being 15 16 under or, so, or something like that it's it's a course where you could see uh, uh quite a good week from from one of these guys you gotta think John Rahm's seen this course at some point I and mean, the guy lives in there many many times yes yeah so, but maybe seeing it in, in PGA conditions is a little different. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's fair. So, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and, and take a little quick break here. And then when we get back, we're going to dive into the futures, matchups, et cetera, all the betting, all the picks, all the predictions that we have for you every week. So right on the other side, we're going to be back in just a couple of minutes. We'll see you then. Welcome to my bookie. You're ready to create an account and start making money. And we're here to help. And remember, you can get a bonus of up to $1,000 on your first deposit. Now you're ready to bet. Just go to mybookie.ag, visit the sports book, click on your bet and input the amount you want to risk or win in the bet slip. Yes, it's that easy. Just remember, at my bookie, you play, you win, you get paid. At Amazon, we're pretty good at getting things done. We're pretty good at solving problems. COVID-19 is the biggest challenge we've had to face. The challenges are what motivate us like flying masks to our employees around the world. We're doing everything we can to get you what you need and doing everything we can to keep our people safe. I'm former Navy pilot, Sarah Rhodes, and I'm proud to lead our Amazon Air Network. All right, and we're back here with the Vegas Squares Waste Management Open Preview Show. We talked on the other side of the break about the Matt Stafford trade with resident Lions fan there, Tony, Token Tony. And uh, obviously, with we couldn't go the show without mentioning the Patrick Reed, uh, let's call it saga, I guess, because it's just <laughs> another episode in the, uh, in the trilogy here. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to get into the bets here, starting as we do every, every week with the futures bets. And we're going to look at the front runners here, guys. Anybody in the double digits token? I'm going to start with you. Uh, what do you like here with the big ballers, the heavy hitters in these in these double digits here? It, it, it's hard to pick somebody up top just because you're not getting such great value, in my opinion. I mean, we got Rom as the favorite at seven to one. Next, with uh, JT at fifteen to two, and then Shoffley at seventeen to two. It's now, hard to take correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Rom opened at six to one. He's actually seven's, a, seven's a very good number at William Hill. There's there's not a number around the world usually above six and a half that I, wow. I can see. So that's seven's actually a good number if you like if you wow. like Rom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know I looked maybe an hour ago on William Hill, like what the futures were. Shoffley was nine to one, so he's definitely getting some value, driving him down a little, and more more to be talked about that on. A little later, I'm gonna take some little flyers on this one. I'm gonna go with uh, Oyster is at 50 to one. Good old Louis, the South African. Uh, that that's one guy I definitely look for forward to uh, having a good second and third round and coming into the weekend. So even if he struggles first round, if he's a couple under par, not concerned about making or missing the cut, then he should have a good flow into the weekend into the fourth round. 
And then one that I actually think will have a really good start in this one is going to be Cameron Champ. Uh, definitely a solid hitter and Long Island player. Uh, I, I actually think he's a dark horse in this one at 90 to 1 to uh, make a solid run. All right. Mr. Parr, what do you have here in this uh, double digit area? Uh, like I guess it, even like I guess it. even single digit area. I guess we got some six, you know, sevens and ones and stuff too. Yeah, it's it's not a single digit tournament for me. I like what Token said about uh, I don't see a uh, I don't see a favorite win this week. Uh, I do have a couple guys uh, that uh, I am full on this week. Willie Zalatoris, just like Aaron mentioned that last week. Um, I like to be the guy that mentions the the the, the young guy that's going to get on a run first but Aaron got me last week but well I mean I talk about a media guy. sorry to interrupt you but talk about a, doing a little bit of research on him no not all talk about a re- meteoric rise I mean we've been talking mm. we've been talking about this guy since Bermuda last year mm-hmm. and, and I mean to, to to look at this here in February and he's 25 to 1 on the PGA tour is just crazy sorry John to cut you off I just wanted to get no, that look listen I I, I at all, like I got no, no problem at all. But uh, I got him at forty-five to one on DraftKings. Oh, even better, uh, yeah. And then uh, also plus four hundred for a top ten. Now let me throw a couple stats at you here. We got uh, four top tens in the last seven starts. You guys have to understand he's only played fifteen PGA Tour events. Okay, he played seven events in uh, two thousand sixteen to two thousand eighteen, and basically he came on. Uh, he came on tour, I mean, early early last year, like he has were talking about. But, uh, you know, I got him at 15 events. But his last seven events, $1.1 million. His first eight events, $15,000. So wow. So that, that's an amazing wow. stat right there. And I love to look at the money. And that tells a lot. It's sort of like the official world golf ranking. And uh, I just love this guy, and I'm looking at him this whole year. Um, if he starts falling off, missing cuts, fine. If he, you know, if, let, let's say he rolls, let's say he rolls like a, you know, 15 this week, 40 next week, and then he goes 5-5, five, five, and then like a 15. This is going to be a guy we're going to look out for, okay? Because yeah, he agree. hasn't played a lot. He hasn't played a lot on the PGA Tour. So I got him at 45-1 to one on DraftKings and plus 400 for a top 10. Okay, and then uh, my, my second guy, and this is a flyer. It's eighty-five to one. It's Sam Burns. Uh, you know, he's been on tour for I think for like four years now, but only full exempt status last couple of years. And he's at uh, he's at eighty-five to one. Or he's got a couple of top tens, but I've been waiting for this guy to break out because of his uh, his very known, well known, his very well known uh, amateur career. So. We'll see what happens with him, but 85 to 1 uh, at Burns and Zalatoris for 45 to 1. I think that's great value there. Yeah, right on. I mean, and and not to pat myself on the back without mentioning company, I mean, Token was betting him on the Corn Ferry last year. Oh, Token's been talking yeah. about him since day one. It's yeah. amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah, him and uh, that's uh, amazing. P- Pendriff were uh, yeah. two of my bigger backers on uh, Corn Ferry. And they were two of the guys dominating Corn Ferry last hey. year. It's that amazing because if you get one out of two of those right in golf handicapping to, for a guy to go on PGA Tour after, uh, you know, basically paying his dues on the Corn Ferry, it, it, it's something that people don't see, so you get the value out of it. Mm-hmm. It's totally fair. So. All right, Tony, I got a two-part question here for you. Um, I, obviously, moving into the double digits, we want to get what you have in this spot. But I also want to see if there's any of these guys that you got your eye on that maybe you're not going to fire now. But if he has a poor first, you maybe it's somebody you could fire on on Friday. Absolutely, yeah, and, and I, it kind of goes back to first of all what what, what John and Token both said. I I, I hate to kind of echo, and you know I, I we like to have differing opinions, but I agree with nearly everything that that that's been talked about. Um, the one thing that I will mention is I I, I really think the odds are tight uh, this week, especially in the futures market. I, I think they're really really well priced. And the top maybe seven or eight names off the board really fit the course, I think, really well. And a lot of those guys are playing extremely well right now. Of the little golf that we've seen, they're playing well. So, Aaron, to your point, um, I think a weak first round from nearly anybody, barring an injury, 
uh, and barring one other thing that I like to look at is when guys have two-way misses, uh, and we can now utilize uh, shot link, which will be uh, back u in use here this week, and you can really see where the misses are uh, with shot link. You don't actually have to be watching, you know, the telecast or something like that to be able to notice it. Um, I don't like two-way misses, especially off the tee when guys are not knowing where the ball is going to go. Uh, you know, if you're missing on one, you know, one direction, that can be sort of corrected. You can get to the range and figure it out, and or you can play for that a little bit more as it goes on. But if you don't know where the ball, the golf ball is going, you just basically have no chance. So, barring something like that, um, you know, Aaron, I would say that uh, you know, a weak round from uh, from a guy like Shoffley. Uh, who has, uh, you know, a really strong record here over the first, uh, what, four times he's played. I, I don't think he's been outside of the top 20 or top 25. Um, you know, that would be a good spot uh, if he goes from, what is he, you know, 9, 10 to 1 at most places, uh, you know, with a 1 or 2 over par first round. Uh, he drops down to that, you know, 50, 60-ish to 1 range maybe. And, all, you know, it requires now a, obviously a stronger second round just to make the cut. But then once you make the cut here, you never know. Uh, there's a chance that a guy like Rom or JT or whatever, you know, might be 12 under, you know, at that point, and, and they might not be able to be caught. But if that's not the case, uh, uh, somebody like Xander, somebody like Matsuyama, uh, Berger, um, they can just string together, you know, two or three really, really quality rounds. And uh, so that's the type of thing that I would be looking at um, if, if I was something along the realm like that you know again I'm not really sure uh to me I just need to watch to be able to know for the most part so it's hard to answer your question you know besides that but that would be something I'd be looking for that's a that's a good answer too I don't hate that at all uh guy I'm looking at here in the double digits uh realm is a guy who's been playing okay since the start of the year and uh I wasn't playing well in 2020 to end the year but right now Gary Woodland going off at 50 to 1 obviously previous champ if, like you said, he can have, you know, four pretty good rounds, you know, five under par, then, then you're right there. Like you said, 20 under par might win this thing, as Tony mentioned earlier. So uh, I'm looking at Gary Woodland. Also, I wish I could have found Zalatoris at 45. I would definitely yeah. be all over that. But I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the uh, Will Zalatoris money line there at 25 to 1. So. Yeah, and I, I, let me throw one in there. I didn't get to the yeah, – actually, only one guy that I have. Uh, I'm only going to have probably two, maybe futures, maybe three. I'm not sure. Is uh, Byunyun An, um, which I Benny. picked up. At, yeah, Benny is fun. Uh, I picked him up at 95, actually, over at Circa. I know he's 75 or 80 here at uh, Will Hill. But, uh, yeah, Benny's a guy I like to – he's streaky as hell. And he tends to play well at places that he's comfortable and or that he likes. Very similar to Bubba Watson in that sense because he can't putt. So we need to find a place where he's really comfortable. And uh, this is it uh, for Benny. He's four for four here with two top tens. Um, he's talked about – he's had – I read a couple of quotes where he's really comfortable at a course like this uh, where you really have to string it out there uh, with long irons and woods and not necessarily with driver. Uh, so I'm going to hope that Benny can maybe make two or three putts over 20 feet. Uh, there's a great stat out there. When, uh, when on holes four or more putts from 20 feet or longer during the week, he is five out of six making a, having a top five across wow. the European and PGA tours. So again, do we know if he's going to make putts? We don't know. But uh, he's as comfortable as he is out here. So uh, 95 to 1. When on is on, he's on. That is – there oh, it is. Oh, jeez. No, that's great. Uh, we we got to get – I mean, that's, that's classic token, if not anything else. So there you go. <laughs> All right, well, let's move into the long shots here. And I tell you what, it, it's so crazy to look at this uh, and to look down these William Hill and see at 100 to 1 Jordan Spieth. It's almost just, like, heartbreaking. But, you know, hey, if there's ever a time – you want the guy to get back on track is when you're getting triple digits for him. But uh, token, uh, again, these, these guys, Emiliano Grillo is the start. Another one of the guys, you know, buddies of the show here. I know that you, a lot of you guys like to bet him. Uh, Emiliano Grillo is the start of these triple digit guys. So token, let's see what you got here. And to mention that name, he gets the tip of the cap, but no play for me oh. yet. Uh, yeah, uh, only one on this one is uh, Kevin Streelman. I think he is pretty comfortable on this course. He can make some uh, strokes, strokes overall of over the field uh, with putting for sure on this course. Local uh, guy now. He's been living there, yeah. what, 10-plus years. So yep. Yeah, he's very familiar with the outline of this course, avoids the tr troublesome areas, and if he misses the green, I, I really like him in up-and-down situations. So 
it's going to be a good week for him. And if you can find him for top 10, probably right around the 8 to 10 to 1 range, take it. You know, I was going to ask you that. Uh, actually, just anybody who wants to field this question is, you know, there's a lot of guys here. You know, you, you, you talked about, you know, with Pat Perez, Joel Damon in these triple digits that, I mean, are there any value, any gems right there with these local guys, with these local ties who I'm sure have played Scottsdale? Is there anything to find in there, John? Absolutely not. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is with Spieth, and, and, you know, you know, to, you know, since we've had a, you know, we, we haven't been button heads enough, Tony, you know, Kepka, that's, a, that's another fade this year. Spieth and Kepka, they're, they're fades. That I really feel that they got in the limelight very quickly, very you know, very fast in a short amount of time, and that that messes with you as a golfer. You know those steady eddies that can go for a long time. Uh, th- those are the guys I look at, and uh, as I said, the guys like Kepka and, and Spieth, I think they're a fade this year. I'm not. I wouldn't put them in the same class, in my opinion. Uh, you know, Kepka. I think the reason he had a subpar year last year was mostly injury based. Um, and, uh, but you know, when he's on and he's healthy, uh, you know, he's, he's a top I, I, 10, top My 20. big thing with Kepka is I think he's looking for a bodybuilding career rather than a golf career right now. And I say that as a joke and also seriously, I think it's uh, one of those things he got thrown in the limelight and, you know, and he's like this guy and, that's why I like fading DeChambeau. Same thing this year. They're getting thrown in the limelight. And we all know as golfers, you have to have low expectations. You can't, you know, put put any added pressure on you. And Spieth, Kepka, DeChambeau, those three right there, that's that's a that was a big spotlight for those guys to go into out of nowhere. And uh I, I just golf handicapping is more about the fade than I think the than who's playing well. Almost. I couldn't agree Especially more with that statement. Up. I totally agree with that. Uh, the problem is it's, it's impossible, I think, to fade Spieth because he's so far down now. I mean, I don't know how you really do it. Um, I mean, if you're getting 125 to 1 on a guy, you know, who really should be a lot better than he is, it, you know, it, it's kind of tough to do because he's not involved in a lot of matchups anymore. Uh, that's the problem. And, and you're paying a premium for that. So, I mean, yeah, if you can find a spot, great. Um, I'm still going to look for a spot to hit Spieth, uh, and again, spots where he's comfortable in. Um, you know, I did it a couple of times last year uh, to actually pretty quality results uh, because when he actually is comfortable and he loves going to a place, he almost tends to play well no matter where his game is. Uh, but, I mean, I couldn't agree, agree more with you. The people that have faded Spieth over the last two years, uh, they've made quite a bit of money matchups, anything, you know, you come up with really, mm-hmm. you know, no top 10 type of events. If you have, if you're on a book like that, Oh my goodness, uh, you've, you've done very well. So I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, as you said, with the Shambo, you know, the numbers are just not going to work for him the majority of the time, you know, he's eight to one uh, in Saudi Arabia this week. And it's just, those numbers just don't work. You know, as you said, you sure. got to be fading guys like that, you know, but if Kepka creeps up to as, you know, we see 40, 45, 50 to one and plus, and he's healthy, he can just go so low. I, That's the problem. You know, it just becomes a numbers game. That's all. Absolutely. And, and what you said about Kepka last week with that sort of form, okay, right? The big thing is uh, with golf handicapping, don't do the futures, fade them in the matchups. Certainly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like I played Kepka at a future, but I didn't even come close to playing him in a matchup just because it's just not – yeah, exactly. Um, if you're going to shoot depending forward. on who he plays i'd love to see him play like harry higgs or someone like that or co-crack or you know <laughs> like let's get it let's get something like that where we get plus 160 on co-crack yeah against against kepka i think those but here here's a great part about the books the books never give those out they only they're only going to play him against spieth because he's struggling same way you know so All right, I asked the question. Now I forgot where we were. So who's going huh. next? <laughs> Three-digit pick. I, ah, I think it is Tony. You want me to start it? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Or we we were going around the horn. I think it was Token. Uh, I know his... Token gave his. I don't know if John. Meant, yeah. I don't know if John gave us some triple digits. I, I did not have any bottom dwellers. Okay. No, no basement dwellers. dwellers. Well, like, yes, nice. Basement dwellers. No basement. Beautiful. Dwellers. 
I have one um, that I've definitely already bet, uh, one that I'm considering. Uh, and uh, it's funny because John just talked about uh, not being involved on the local guys, and I'm playing uh, – I'm making a local play here. I'll admit Oh, it. don't uh, make my local play. I might be. This could be your play. Uh, All right. On, on three. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Chez Revy. There it is. <laughs> there it is. We got him. We got him. <laughs> Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I, I mean, I, does I that mean it. he's going to miss the it. cut? So, that, uh, you know, they should be fading us? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> They're going to strip his tour card on the ninth hole. Yeah, probably. Ooh, that would be a horrible way to go out. <laughs> yeah, if he gets DQ'd or whatever, he signs a, a bad scorecard, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean. Going I mean, out before he even goes in. Exactly. But my quick reasoning is uh, he's been a, a member here and he's played, you know, so many rounds. I don't think he is anymore. Um, so I kind of like that aspect of it. Uh, he still lives there uh, or at least, you know, very close by. Um, and it's been either a missed cut or a really strong finish for him uh, in this tournament throughout his time. Uh, so that's one of those things. I'm not going to play him in a matchup uh, because of this, but Chez is interesting because he's so insanely streaky and he also can't hit the ball anywhere. So that really shouldn't be good uh, on a course like this. But when he is on, every shot is in the middle of the club and every shot is in the middle of the green. And uh, let's go for it here. Um, I got lucky. It, it really moved down hard at Circa. Uh, so I have him over 200 at Circa. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I got... It's a great number. Over 200. That's it's amazing. 220 at Circa. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So. Um, Still there, still available. If, uh, I'm gonna, I'm if a, account. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 20, oh, 2018. Drive out there right now. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> 2018, he had the lead after 72, but lost to Woodland in the playoffs. So yeah. he, he's definitely been there at crunch time. And let's hope he slams the door if we can get some some J.B. Holmes value. Like That would decided. be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, I also threw down on some Pat Perez. Just he's yeah. one, of my, one of my favorite golfers, so – uh, I threw down him at two, two, 225 to one again. Let's hope he doesn't miss the cut like he did last week. So, All right, let's go into the matchups here. And it looks like we've got, uh, based on your all's futures bets here, or the ones that you've thrown out, we've got kind of a, a podcast matchup bet. It's, mm. uh, it's a Will Zalatoris versus Benny on in the first round. I see on William Ooh. Hill. Zalatoris is minus 140, Mr. Parr. Ooh. How was yeah. Zal, Willie Zal? I mean, I think we just need to start throwing li- Nick, Willie Zally, Willie, Willie Zillow, Zizzle. I, I, I mean, we gotta have some, we got we gotta have, we gotta have a couple of nicknames for this guy. That's for sure. Um, I, I don't like him against On. You know, I, he, he, that guy is stock right. He's he's amazing. I like him against Scheffler at minus one hundred nine on DraftKings. Um, minus one hundred nine at DraftKings for against Scheffler that finished. I think. I had him in my one and done last year, and I think he finished like uh, tied for fourth or something like that. But he held the uh, the thirty six and fifty four hold lead. You know, younger younger guy, rookie of the year last year. Uh, but however, uh, what do we talk about with this guy? You know, when you play well at a tournament the year before, doesn't necessarily you're going to play well the next year. So I got him there, um, and then we got uh, my boy Harris English after a missed cut last week with a bad tee time, courtesy Tony Johnson, uh, who <laughs> always, you know, has the cor- course outline, and that's a huge thing with the bad tee time. So now look at it. So you got English now. He had a bad tee time last week, misses the cut. You're getting value on him this week, okay? And guess who's he playing? My, another one of my favorite fades is Hideki Matsuyama. You know, we're fading Matsuyama this week. He's uh, minus 106 against them. I, I think it's a great matchup. Uh, I really like the matchups this week with uh, Willie Zizzle and English. And now here's the matchup of the year. Okay, guys. Oh, oh, oh. The year? Oh. Like, wow, year. It's, tout, it's tout time. <laughs> listen, it is. I'm telling you guys. Uh, listen, I, I haven't put a lot of stock into saying, okay, this is the best bet. But this wait, is wait, wait, wait. $99 now. If we get it wrong, the rest of the year is free. <laughs> it better yeah, be the exactly, match of the year. Exactly. <laughs> Matchup wow. of the year, okay? All, All right. right. This, is a, this is a wild one. Um, Ryan Moore, okay? Oh, Ryan goodness. Moore has fallen off the face of the fucking earth, okay? And we talked about this earlier. It's about fades and matchups. It's not about who's playing well, but fucking – Ryan Moore, first of all, last uh, WMOs where he might have been actually playing good, 
the waste management open. He's has three missed cuts. Yeah, how about this? He's missed four cuts in a row. Okay. You have Zach Johnson on the other side, minus 106. Okay. He has 10, 10 top tens. 10 top tens and or I'm sorry, three top tens in his last 10 starts and no missed cuts. If that's not a matchup of the a matchup of the year, I don't know. He hasn't missed any cuts in 10 times. Moore, on the other hand, has listed, missed his last four cuts. Plus, he's missed in the last three years. Every time he's played Phoenix, that's three missed cuts. This is a great, great spot right here. And if you just add up the data, it just makes sense. All right, so there it is. Matchup of the year, ZJ over Ryan Moore. Minus 106. Look at that Minus value. Right there, That's guys. nice. Yes. At least that, should be, that should be 155. There Minus 155. Minimum. I mean, that's crazy. Take it to the bank or the rest of the year's free. All right, Tony, <laughs> what do we got here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, uh, I think we're going to have some similar stuff across the board, uh, you know, based on what we've said. Um, I am also on the Zalatoris uh, over Scheffler train. I unfortunately have minus 110 and not 109, right. like our guy John down there. So uh, eking out the value, I love that. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think your reasoning is solid. Um, Wait, you, know, you got Sheffler. Zalatoris over Scheffler? I do. Plus yeah. 105. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, it's, there's a 105. Okay. It's a plus 105 at William Hill right now. Yeah. Ah, well, I bet it on wow. Tuesday. So there you go. <laughs> no good for me. But um, yeah. So, break so, out uh, the phone right here. <laughs> <laughs> Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> There's another one with Zalatoris because, uh, again, I wasn't sure that 40 or 45 or wherever the case is was enough. I know he's down to, what, 25 or something like that, one spot. Uh, I, I just didn't bet him, you know, in the future market. But uh, have Zalatoris over Russell Henley, uh, minus 120. Um, that's over at South Point. I, I just – Henley just doesn't fit this course really at all. Um, again, more of a Southeastern type of player, uh, courses that are shorter uh, where you can kind of get after. And uh, Zell Torres is just playing so well right now that I think he just can, you know, just crush his ass, uh, you know, long-term in a spot like this. So those are my two Zalator spots. Um, and then getting back to uh, Byunyun on, uh, have him over Carlos Ortiz. That didn't work out too well last week, I bet against Carlos Ortiz. And uh, Carlos had a really nice tournament. Uh, but mm -hmm. we got on over Ortiz plus 100 uh, as well. And then the last two are Gary Woodland, which I know you're definitely on here, Aaron, um, uh, this week. Uh, over Manny Wolf. Uh, the problem with Wolf is that he uh, left with an injury early last week after the first round. So after a withdrawal, that's always kind of awkward to play. Um, but the fact that Woodland minus 105 here uh, over Wolf, I decided to take it anyway. Um, just because I think the course fit is great, as we've talked about here with Woodland, and the fact that he looks like he is over his injury himself that he uh, had to go through last year. Um, he started to play a lot better here uh, early on in the season this, uh, this, this week. And then I think my favorite uh, matchup is really amazing, another uh, John Parr special, which uh, he talked about sort of fading and not being behind Webb Simpson here. And I, and I think just think this number's great, uh, is Daniel Berger over Webb Simpson plus 100 um over at south point and uh just really like that spot here burger a, a a total um bermuda grass kind of no, i wouldn't say specialist i didn't want to say the word specialist uh because clearly he's become a great all-around player but um has certainly done most of his damage uh on bermuda type of tracks and uh he's five of six here with three top tens and um has really just been rolling uh ever since the restart of last year so uh, yeah, I just think it's a really nice spot here against uh, Webb Simpson, who I'm not, you know, a huge fan of this week. And Berger just brings it every single week he plays. So those are my matchups this week. All right, Token. There's been 26 hole-in-ones <laughs> in tournament play since the Phoenix Open, Waste Management Open, moved to TPC Scottsdale. The hole-in-one prop, yes, minus 140, no, plus 120. I already have it written down. Hole -in -one, <laughs> yes, minus 140. There, there, there are five potential holes where a hole in one could happen. What, 16, 17, 12? Four, and I think it's – Two par threes on, on the front. Seven now. or something, yeah. Yeah. I got an interesting question for the group right here. Do you think it's better? Do you think as far as a value play on the hole in one prop, do you think it's better that fans are there or they're not there? I think it's better mm. that fans are there. I, I agree, especially on hole 16 and uh, on this course. But 
there's definitely five doable holes on this one. Of course, 17 being a far stretch, but I see it likely that there are multiple holes. There was one. Well, let me ask you this. If you're one of the lucky 5,000 fans to be able to attend, what do you do? Do you scatter? Hole 17. Do you just sit on a hole or do you scatter? Me, personally, I'd probably no, start you, uh, watch everybody tee off and then go to hole 17 and watch on the green. I think what you do is you find a spot to gather all 5,000 fans and you go group for the group of, like, <laughs> Joel Damon, Harry Higgs, and Denny Not McCarthy. Correct. And that, and then you just get everybody there at one time, you know, and don't do it for Tiger, don't do it for Rory, don't do it for fucking Xander. You know, you, you do it for the guys that would actually appreciate it, and then you could throw beers in the air just like when Tiger hit the hole in one, and it'd be a great thing. Zoltars. Well, I mean, yeah, the Zoltars, if it hits it, it'd be great. But I, I've been to two golf tournaments in my life, and I've sat – I've parked on a hole both times. I feel like I'm missing out even though I see everybody. Is that weird? There's no right or wrong answer. Years. I like walking with one group. Or, yeah, I like walk- walking with one. I like walking with one group, and uh, do that for like nine holes, and and do it with people that will appreciate it. Just like I said, go with the Pat Perez, perfect example right there. If Pat Perez is at a golf tournament that I go to, I, I want to go to his group, and we're just gonna be like chugging beers and stuff like that. That's what I was thinking. Like, yeah, you guys are shotgun cool. a hole, shotgun <laughs> a beer. There you go. That's what I want to yeah. do with Pat Perez. So. <laughs> All right, Token, it's time for your matchups. Let's reverse the 0-4 trend and switch that to a 4-0, please. Uh, 4-0, including the prop, because I am on the whole whole. Okay, one, hold, yes. yeah, minus, you're right. Minus 140. I only have three matchups this week. Our low play currently is Shoffley over Thomas. I was able to find it at minus one, or a plus 105. Now, now it's currently down to minus 110. So got the value good while I could. Our mid play is going to be Brennan Todd over Matt, Matt Kuchar at even. And then our big bankroll play of the week is Gary Woodland over Ricky Fowler. Ricky, even though he does play this course very well, Woodland, I think, has more success at this course. And he doesn't have the baggage like Ricky has. I mean, ever since Ricky got married, it's just been downhill from there. Oh, you calling this broad baggage? Wow. <laughs> I love it's actually it. I not love it. untrue. I mean, I didn't think about the marriage thing, but you're kind you're right. I think it's more swing, but <laughs> but you're actually not wrong, Token, which is funny. It's all in the hips. Wow. I I mean that that is a great piece of wow. when you're golf when you're gambling in golf and you're handicapping, getting married and having a kid, having a kid is a very good thing. As far yes. as you've heard of many stories. Glory you know, it helped, people, yeah. Yeah, and then but now getting married on the other hand may not be as the generally same thing. Is a, <laughs> yes. that, that's a fade. That's a fade. Jordan you know, Spieth, too, by the way, got married three years ago and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, been on the down <laughs> yeah. we, I think oh, we saw true. like it's amazing. it's a that's an amazing stat that we just pulled up. Well, maybe you can uh, you can do the it, it don't mean a thing if the ring don't help your swing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, All right. Nice. I like it. So, back-to-back back here with Token. Give me some DFS, man. I need to make some money this week. I need a lineup. I need an optimal lineup. Let me get some, oh. golf. Let me get some golfers. I need my fix. We got it even better than one than last week. So, I'm going to start with the top, as always. We got 50000 in the bank, as always. We got Shoffley for 11 k Moving wow. down to good old Louis Oistosen out of South Africa. Always plays this course pretty decent for 8,900. I saw a lot of value on that one. I'm back on Siwoo this week for 8,100. I, I think this course actually isn't the best fit for him, but it's not as bad as last week, especially coming off of when I think his, his monkey's off his back. He had his sushi already in Scottsdale. He's, he's ready to play. I, I follow him on Instagram. He was having sushi uh-huh. the other day. Uh, yeah, good to know. Good, good yeah. save. <laughs> uh, we got Corey Connors for 7,900. 
We got Emiliano Guerrillo for 7,300. And then we got the basement dweller for Kevin Streelman for <coughs> 8,800. Basement dweller, the Kevin basement Streelman. Dweller. Yep. Oh, wow. Right, that was so that's, really entertaining. So, so wait. In your DFS lineup, you usually say we got the winner this week. We don't have a winner this week in that? Yeah, I, I, I do like when you say that. Huh? That's so Streelman's going to win. Streelman's winning? Yep. Wow. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dude, okay. Interesting fact about Streelman. You guys know he won, I think it was the Wyndham one year. He birdied the last seven holes in a row to True. win the tournament by one. And that was an amazing, an amazing tournament. It's the only, it's the only PGA Tour player in history that's seven birdies in a row or better, I guess, to uh, win a tournament. It's just so yep. amazing. I'd like to me with Alpatras on 17 and then an eagle to close it out on 18. Okay. That was Steve Lowry. Steve Lowry. Oh, yeah. my Dirt goodness. Up. Wow. Nice. Oh, John. boom. Holy I moly. Nailed that one. That, was that, yeah. all the that was in the, uh, yeah. that was in the, the other format, the point format. The international yeah, the at format. Cherry Hills yeah. in Cherry yeah. Hills, Colorado. That's what Denver. I'm talking about. And dude, it, and you know what another thing was <laughs> is what he did was he freaking dude. Remember when he got it up and down out of the water? He had he had his ball halfway out of the water on like hole fourteen oh, or fifteen. I can't remember what yeah. it was. He got up and down out of the water for par, and I think it was his only par, like last five or six holes. He had like a double eagle, eagles eighteen. Like that was the, one of the most amazing golf tournaments I've ever seen in my life. Steve Lowry, man, well done. Yeah, only the sound of albatross. <laughs> <laughs> just crazy and it was like i love that i, I love how great the pga tour players because you know he hits a cut just like lee trevino and he hits that high cut and he had to hit it high enough because it was probably 40 feet elevation 50 feet elevation on that double eagle and it just kicks straight right boom right in the back of the hole like mm-hmm. probably would have missed it if the pin was out it was an amazing tournament to watch well, as we wrap up the last two segments here, I'd like to take a, a more serious approach to the podcast here. I, I just bear with me for a second. I, uh, Token, it, it takes a big man to, you know, admit his faults and get on the road to recovery. So I'd like to just give you an applause because Charles Schwartzel has been on this list and on this board and you didn't take one stab at him with anything. So, I mean, it takes a big man to, to not bet this guy blindly anymore. And I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. If I can, if I, I can, I actually forgot about all about that. I I did come I, I, going through like all the futures and all that. I did cross paths <laughs> with his name, but it it was a quick pass. Proud of you. I'm proud of you. Got to no, give myself a pat on the back. There you go. If we were sitting in the same room, I'd give you a gold star, but we're not. So. All right. Uh, as we wrap up the show with the last two segments, uh, we've got Tony Johnson with his plays on other tours. Again, we've got uh, Saudi Arabia, and what else you got? So what I got this week, uh, I don't think there's much other play in the other tours, to be honest. We think everybody's off. So, uh, yeah, Saudi oh, Arabia, one of those uh, classical Middle Eastern events where they just throw a bunch of money at people to show up, and uh, it has worked uh, this year. So we got a lot of – even our guy Cockrack is, uh, is actually over there uh, this week. Uh, from the yeah. So that's kind of entertaining. But the people that. they've paid to show up uh, from the PGA Tour success, Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau, Patrick Reed, Tony Finau, Victor Hovland's getting a small check. And the other one that I read about, Ooh. funny enough, uh, was Kevin Na as well uh, getting paid to show. So that's always kind of fun. Um, this is actually, weirdly enough, we think of just kind of desert sort of, you know, middle earth type of courses out there. This is actually on the coast um, here. It's a coastal track that plays along the Red Sea. And uh, so winds can be a big factor uh, out here, and they will be uh, actually on – thursday and a little bit into friday but uh yeah i mean this is a very scorable type of course uh the one thing to note is uh paspalum grass throughout uh we've talked about that before mayacoba puerto rico kuala lumpur spots like that so some of these guys that have had a good record there graham mcdowell won this tournament last year despite the fact that it looks like it might be more of a bomber's paradise but graham mcdowell has played so well on paspalum uh in the past so i always thought that was a little bit interesting um anyways i'll be quick with my uh, few plays here um 
DJ is the favorite here at four and a half or five to one. I mean, just crazy numbers. Uh, not something I want to be on here, but I certainly wouldn't, you know, try to fade it, certainly. Um, but uh, plays that I've made here, I picked up Victor Hoblin before he moved down at 18 to one. He's now 14, 15, 16, depending on where you look. Hoblin at 18 uh, has done well here. Obviously, he's winning Puerto Rico. He's comfortable on a grass like this. Um, and uh, I got Shane Lowry at 55 to one. Let's see, Kurt Kitayama at 150 to one. And that's it for the future bets uh, matchups. We got Lowry over Andy Sullivan, minus 125. Victor Hovland over Tyrrell Hatton, plus 100. And the third and final one, something I don't really ever do, but I think this number should be like minus 500. Uh, but it's, a, it's minus 185. I hardly ever play a matchup like this, but it's Tommy Fleetwood over Phil Mickelson. Uh, Phil has played in this tournament the last couple of times they've held it. Uh, and I think that's part of what's going into this. Cause he was a, he finished third and he finished 20 something a couple of years ago. Uh, but Tommy Fleetwood has never played here before. And if Fleetwood had played, he would have finished quite well too. Uh, Mickelson not playing well, not in the same realm as Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, so to me, this is a minus 300 type of spot here. That's being priced at minus 185. Uh, Phil just cannot hang uh, with Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, and spots like this and where you got to score. So we're going to go with Fleetwood over Phil Mickelson. I was going to say, that's a new one for you, man. Minus 185. Rare. In a very, very yeah. rare. I just think it's it's just men against boys type of thing. I, to me, I, I don't see how he can hang. All right, fair enough. All right, so we're going to wrap up the show here with a new segment, become a, a key fixture in here. Uh, John Parr. We're going to call this John Parr's one and done because that's basically what it is. John Parr. Uh, has for many years done a survivor league. I'll let him kind of explain that. And uh, you get one golfer every week and then you don't get them anymore. So why don't you elaborate on your one and done and uh, give us that pick? Absolutely. We'll do. And uh, first and foremost, I love the hat and fade. It's a great fade this year. He played amazing last year. He's a putter just like Luke Donald was. And Donald was a fade for a long time after that. All right. So, so this one and done league, we have 60 people in there. I won't disclose the amount of money that we bet on the uh, fantasy league, but we have 60 people in there. And what happens is you pick one golfer a week. Once you pick that golfer, you can't pick them for the rest of the year, whatever they make in money that year or that, that tournament, uh, you will add up towards the end of the year. Uh, the, all these guys hate me because I've been playing it for like six years and I've, I've done very well. I, the, the first year, unfortunately for me, because they make fun of me all the time, is that I won. And uh, you know what? They came up and gave me my prize money in all $1 bills. <laughs> I thought that was a great thing. <laughs> Strip club time, it sounds like. Either way. Um, so – it was it was amazing, and and it was just like one of those subtle jabs that only good friends can do to each other. Um, so, uh, so far this year, I've taken a, we're in our fourth event at the Waste Management, and I've taken uh, Ryan Palmer, Scotty Scheffler, and Tony Finau, which I had a good good kick last week for about four hundred and fifty k. Um, so it got me like right middle of the pack, maybe just above middle, and. Um, I'm going to take our boy, Xander Shoffley. We all love him. Wow. He's, uh, he's one of those guys, especially in a one-and-done one event. Um, people won't take him this week, I guarantee, because they're going to save him for, like, the Masters or whatever. However, at the beginning of the year, sometimes at the end of the year, uh, you end up with golfers that, you know, you end up with three golfers that you want to take for the last event of the year, the PGA Championship, generally. And – you wish you would have used them earlier. So I'm going to take Xander this week. Um, God, I got some great, great info on Xander. First and foremost, there's another uh, podcast called Gravy in the Sleeves by Colt Nost and uh, Drew Stoltz. And they talked about how Colt Nost was on the uh, CBS broadcast this week, right? And what happened was to Xander on Friday, on number 17 on the South Course, he uh, hit a ball right by the green. They couldn't find it. Okay. Going back to our rules discussion. It was embedded. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, of course it was, right? Did, did he ask the, uh, the person that was on break? <laughs> 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 All right. So what happened was is that 
basically uh, it was stuck in the rough and nobody could find it for two and a half minutes. Um, per the PGA Tour, you have three minutes to look for your ball once you get to the green. <clears throat> Colt Nose was thankfully on that hole. He said he found that ball in about two minutes and 45 seconds, okay? Xander goes par. He gets up and down for par. He goes birdie on the last hole on the south course. He makes the cut on the number. Guess what? What what happened, Tony Johnson? Where almost e almost every time, right? Make it on the number, squeak <laughs> in there, and bomb the weekend and crush it. Yep. So, <clears throat> but I thought that was a great, great story about how fans and, and people around the course, they look for the balls and you just – you know, finish up. And of course, of course, Nose goes up to him after Sunday and he's like, Hey, I don't want to find her. See, I just want you to come on our podcast. <laughs> so maybe us as volunteers, maybe we can find an embedded ball every once in a while. Maybe we can get like Tiger Woods on our podcast sometime. Yeah, yeah. no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In closing, in closing, guys, this is an amazing, amazing, phenomenal stats by uh, Xander Shoffley. His last 14 events, guess what? All top 25s. Wow. Okay? <laughs> He's f he has five top fives in his last seven events. Wow. Okay? So especially for a one-and-done, <clears throat> excuse me, type of situation, five top fives, last seven events, you're going off on of money. Anytime you can get like three, four hundred k that's your that's your guy. And uh, Xander Shoffley is a great pick this week. There you have it. Xander Shoffley, Waste Management Open, second place finisher. <laughs> Behind Streelman. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the basement Nicely dweller. Done. Nicely done. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. We're going to run down a list of all of our sponsors. Please support them. First and foremost, the 12 Ounce Sports Network where we are aired in audio formats on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can also catch us on YouTube and at 12OunceSportsNetwork.com. While you're there, be sure to visit the 12 Ounce Sports Store. And they've got everything from show merchandise, polos, coffee mugs, so much more. Our title sponsors are both Vice Golf and Fanatics.com. Please head over to LVSquares.com, click the sponsors page. Shop using those dedicated affiliate links. When you shop, that does help support the podcast. Uh, both financially and clout with both Vice Golf and Fanatics.com. So please make sure to get out there. Vice Golf is, a for, of course, rapidly changing the game. And now with TaylorMade maybe being sold to a Chinese company, mm -hmm. Vice Golf might be able to come in here and, and, and maybe be number two or three. I don't know. That, that may be a stretch. but uh, Also, the Heater, <laughs> bet, the Heater Bet Tracking App, independent sports data entertainment company, focusing on enhancing your sports betting experience. Hey, please download it today. You can track live scores and your bets and track your bets and submit your bets and uh, for everyone to see all in one place. Keep track of your bankroll management today with the Heater Sports app. In theholegolf.com, you can use that. That's a 12-ounce sports affiliate. Uh, you can check them out on the 12-ounce sports network page, everything in the latest clubs, aids, practice equipment, GPS, et cetera. And then, of course, our local golf guy, Pro-Am Customs. Kevin Pacpaco is doing a great job over there. Customized golf clubs are not just for the pros. They're for all of us. The only limit is your imagination. Message them on Instagram at Pro-Am Customs to get started and tell them that the Vegas Square sent you. So, all right, boys, jam-packed show. We got it all in. We hope you've listened to this point, and we hope that you tail our bets and make a lot of money with us. Kevin Stroman for the win. For Spike – or for Spike. Spike's not even here. <laughs> for Token Tony, for Tony Johnson, and for John Parr, I am Aaron. We appreciate you listening. Good luck on your bets. We'll catch you on the next one. We'll be back for the Super Bowl – prop bet podcast the bible's coming on friday along with all the other because we got it all in one place now on the Vison. Vison, shout out to Vison for uh, hooking us up with all of the pdfs so again mm -hmm. we appreciate you listening we'll catch you on the next one enjoy the weekend we're out